Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be talking to you about boiling eggs. Stop boiling your eggs. We're going to be experimenting with three methods of simmering eggs. Cultures have been roasting eggs for at least one million years. And since the invention of pottery, cultures have been simmering eggs since about 5,000 BC. So this is a tradition that goes way back in time. Now if you simmer your eggs, not boil, properly, you should get no cracks in your eggs. Before we start with simmering eggs, I want to talk to you a little bit about the age of the eggs that you plan to simmer to make hard boiled eggs or deviled eggs or egg salad. One thing you should know is that the best eggs to use for this method of egg cooking is an older egg. As the egg tends to lose some of its moisture, the shell comes away from the egg easier and the air sac becomes larger, making it much easier to peel the egg. And if you're like me, one of the most frustrating things about making simmered eggs is the process of trying to peel off all those little shells that stick to the outside and it's maddening and then you get an ugly peeled egg. And what we want is beautiful peeled eggs. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a little experiment I've devised for today to help you determine the age of the eggs, roughly, that you plan to use for simmering eggs. Following that, we'll move on to the three different methods of simmering eggs and these methods came directly from my culinary school cookbook so you know that they should be good quality information so let's get started oh, we don't this up. experiment for figuring out the general age of eggs or figuring out which ones would be best for simmering. <laughs> I actually purchased some beakers so that we can work with the same water level. So each beaker should contain the same temperature of water as well as the same volume of water. So you can see I labeled the eggs that I had in my fridge. I had two eggs in a separate container because I had bought new eggs and I wanted to get rid of the old container. So they were just sitting in a little ramekin and I've labeled that egg old AF. It's probably uh, three weeks old. This other egg labeled old is two weeks old. The eggs I just bought this past Friday are labeled regular. And this egg is an egg that I got from my local supplier and I have no idea the age of this egg. Now, these are ambiguous terms, old AF, old whatever. Eggs last for a really long time when properly stored. So this old AF is still edible. It's just a term being used to decipher between the eggs. First thing I'm gonna do is drop them in left to right from old AF to old to regular and to the one I don't know anything about. Now based on the carton, there should have been some variation between these eggs, but it looks like that these eggs are roughly the same age. This method is called floating eggs for freshness. So as an egg ages, it loses moisture in its air sac and enlarges, which increases the buoyancy, which is what you're seeing in this egg here. The older the egg, the higher it floats. They all float down here. Say that if the egg, the top of the egg, floating above the water is larger than a dime, which we see right here, then that egg is not suitable for poaching. That egg will be absolutely suitable for simmering. The shell on that one should come off super easy. This egg's buoyancy 
is just very, very slight. This egg is really has no buoyancy at all. Neither does the regular. And of course, this one is the oldest egg of them all. So this is the egg that is going to be the best for simmering. Unfortunately, I only have two of them, which means all the eggs today for this project are all gonna probably be not so good, not so easy to peel, but I'm up for the task. And I promise I'll try to make boiling eggs a little bit more interesting than watching paint dry. So the next step is that I'm gonna boil all of those different aged eggs using one method and cook them all to the same doneness and then peel them and see how that goes. So the first method I'm using is probably what is the most common method, where people take the eggs from the refrigerator, put them in a pot of water until they start boiling. Now, what a lot of people probably end up doing is just let them keep boiling. I'm gonna be using what is going to be referred to as method three. Method three involves taking eggs directly from the refrigerator and putting them in a saucepan over high heat, bringing that water to a boil, immediately turning the heat off, covering the pan, taking it off of the burner and setting it aside for 20 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do with these. One great thing about simmered eggs is that they are a wonderful low fat source of protein. Other ways to eat boiled eggs other than on their own include deviling them, pickling them, eating them soft boiled in a cup, which is an English method of eating a simmered egg, using them in an egg salad, and using them as an accompaniment to many types of salads, including the Nesswa salad, the California salad, a chef salad, and even potato salad, which is my favorite compound salad. It can even be used in making dressing. Yeah, hard boiled egg can be used to make salad dressing, more specifically the yolks. There's a recipe in the description below if you're interested in looking at that. Okay. This is what I would consider a boil. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm going to cover the pan, slide it to the back of the stove. I'm gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes while we move on to the next experiment. All right, it's been 20 minutes for that first set of eggs and I've got them pulled out of the water. I'm going to peel them under running water, which is one of the tips for ease of getting the shell off. In addition to that tip, you want to start at the larger end of the egg when cracking because this is where the air sac is going to be. So there's going to be a natural cavity to, to start pulling away the, uh, the eggs. This is a hot egg. Um, the best way to peel eggs is while they're warm and under running water. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and let's see how they each turned out under the same conditions, but different ages. Okay, I'm gonna start with the old ones going forward and then to the unknown one. Here's some pretty music for you to listen to while I crack eggs. Okay, so as you can see, the easiest ones to peel were the old AF egg and the egg of unknown age. And you can see um, how big the air sac actually was at the top of that egg. It's not even really egg shaped anymore. This one was slightly easier and this one obviously uh, not great. And then this one, um, also not great. This was about the three week egg. This was a two week egg. This was about a one week egg based on the use by date 
on the actual cartons. So I'm gonna say if you want to make deviled eggs or anything like that, the best ones to use to simmer are ones that are at least, the ones that have been purchased at least three weeks before you want to peel them. Otherwise, you're gonna end up like with crap like that. And um, it's pretty universal. Now we're gonna go on, to the, let's take a look at the uh, inside of these eggs. This is the old AF egg. This is the old, the regular. If you've watched my intro video on the incredible edible egg, you'll know why that is actually so much darker orange than the other ones. This is what I would say is just a little bit overcooked, but obviously still delicious and still edible. So now we're gonna move on to the three methods of simmering your eggs. One thing to keep in mind is that these will all vary and it depends on the temperature of the egg, the size of the egg, and the amount of water all three of those things will impact the cooking time. I'm going to do all of these eggs in four cups of water just to stay consistent along the line. The eggs are the same size eggs and from the same source. And the for the first method, they will be simmered starting from room temperature. So they recommend that you take the eggs out of the fridge about an hour before you plan to simmer them. And so my eggs have been out just a little bit, about, bit longer than that, but they're all the same temperature. For the first method, I'm going to do four eggs and cook them each to different levels of doneness from soft to medium to hard and then i'm gonna overcook one all of these eggs are the same age so they will all have the same level of difficulty <laughs> when i peel them when we inspect the inside of them following each method there are some standards to look for when you look for a good quality boiled egg. If you've ever gotten the boiled egg from a grocery store or a gas station, you'll notice that the whites are a little bit rubbery and they don't taste so great. The same thing can be said for a lot of food service places. I have made a lot of deviled eggs in the past and sometimes for caterings and that requires getting a whole pail of already peeled eggs and I've never been a fan of the texture of those eggs. I'll show you after the first method what you want to look for in a properly cooked simmered egg. So I'm going to get the water boiling and get the eggs ready and then I'll be right back. For the first method you want to bring your water to a boil and then place your eggs into the boiling water and then reduce that to a simmer. For a soft boiled egg you want to cook for three to four minutes. I'm going to set the alarm for three and a half minutes to cut the difference. First we'll take the soft boiled out and place it into cold water. For this method, which is method one, the soft boiled eggs are being cooked for three and a half minutes. The medium eggs are going to be cooked for six and a half minutes. So I'm adding three minutes to uh, the current pot. For hard cooked eggs, I'm adding six minutes for a total cook time of 12 and a half minutes. And then for the overcooked one, I'm just going to go ahead and keep talking to you and keep boiling it. And honestly, that's pretty close to how I used to make boiled eggs, pretty much until they get to the cracking point. One of the nice things about using room temperature eggs when you're simmering your eggs is that it reduces the chance that you'll end up with a cracked shell. Cold eggs put into hot water will cause the shells to crack. And then and then you end up with those white globules that leak out and you get a weird looking egg. Remember the large part you start with first because that's where the air sac is. And these are the two week old eggs, which were the oldest eggs that I have on hand. I'm trying to be very careful because I am going to be using these for, ugh, well, we'll see how this goes actually. This is soft boiled, so this is very, this is very soft. I am going to be using some of these eggs in a couple of upcoming videos. So I'm trying to be very careful as to not break them but obviously with a soft boiled egg this is not going to be used for deviled eggs or anything of the sort because it's soft as the name implies go for the medium egg we'll just gently because this is a very soft like it's very soft inside we'll go on to the medium egg you can see this is the part that that will loosen from the egg the older it gets and that's the part that makes peeling the eggs easier is when that can easily come away from the egg. And the older it gets, the more that happens. It's not such a great job. 
that's a medium while i wait for this hard egg just to get uh come to be a little bit more cooler i will show you what the inside of these these eggs look like this one is a soft boiled egg which if you're into soft eggs look at that that's beautiful if you had some toast and you could just cut that open on toast oh perfect i know that kind of grosses some people out but trust me, it's delicious. I had a best friend in high school who loved to eat her eggs runny and she challenged me to try it one day. Here's a bit of a more medium. Now I don't think that I had enough water once the eggs started to simmer. And so this part that you see here is because the whole egg wasn't under the water. So just keep that in mind when you uh, start off to use more water than you think you would because it's going to evaporate off. And depending on how long you're cooking your eggs, you might have uh, eggs that aren't cooked uh, uniformly Formally. I think this hard boiled egg is probably good to go now. And, yeah, it's not perfect. Kind of did a botch job. Let's see the hard boiled egg. See, now that's really pretty and that's what you're gonna want for a deviled egg. These are great for breakfast eggs, but these are definitely wouldn't, wouldn't be what you want on a on a platter of an, any sort like for a cold or dirt this egg has been over there simmering or simmering away this whole time so i'm just going to drop it in some cold water and get it to come to room temperature and we can see if uh we definitely overcooked it the overdone egg now if i did it overdone properly there will probably be a green line in it if not later i'll overcook an egg for you so that you can see what an overcooked egg looks like if you've never in fact seen one I did not overcook it if you don't mind and you can wash it on a simmer you can you can do your simmered eggs for probably 15 minutes with relative safety so we're gonna move on to method two method two involves taking eggs from the refrigerator placing them in a pan of water bringing the water to a boil and once the water's boil you reduce the water to a simmer and you take the eggs out depending on how done you want the yolks so it's going to be one minute for soft boiled eggs using this method it's going to be three to five minutes for medium using this method and it's going to be 10 minutes for hard boiled eggs so let's try this method so straight into the cold water up to high. I don't know if it's gonna make much of a difference, but I'm gonna put an extra cup of water in here just because I don't want the eggs to be cooked inconsistently like with the batch in the method one. So now we'll just wait for this to come to a boil. I've reduced the stove top to a simmer, which on my stove was just like last time at about a medium for one minute. Take one out, I'll reset the clock for three and a half minutes so now we've got the, the next one will be five minutes and 30 seconds more to equal 10 minutes of cooking and you can see the water starting to evaporate with the removal of the other eggs which were, was raising the level of the water and the evaporation it's starting to uh, not cover the eggs properly moral of the story for this one is you're better off with more water so that's been 10 minutes for a hard egg. And like before, I'm gonna just let this sit in there and uh, boil away and see if I can get that overdone. So here we are again. We'll go for the soft egg. Always remember the large end is where you wanna start for ease. And I can already tell that this soft egg using this method is cooked just a little bit more get that skin so with method one using room temperature eggs i already can tell that that um i don't know if i'm imagining it but okay you know what i'm not even gonna finish that one i can't even there might be something to doing uh starting with room temperature eggs that makes um makes it easier to peel also i'm not sure if there's a science behind that this one's coming off a little bit easier, but I don't want to get too excited. Well, that one looks pretty good. Let's go with the hard egg. Let's see what we can do with this. I, I think this is a fail. That's a fail soft oil. This one, however, medium so the medium came out better with method two hard 
So while we wait for that overdone egg to come to a temperature that I can actually touch it, let's talk about the standards of simmered eggs and what you want to look for. So you want to see an evenly coagulated white and yolk, which these two are good illustrations of. This, not so much. You can see translucent, ugh, whatever. That's not a good standard. Now, it's still gonna be delicious and edible, and some people absolutely love their eggs this way. As far as the whites, you want them to be glossy and firm, but not tough and rubbery. And like I mentioned before, the tough and rubbery is what you're gonna find with uh, institutional grain simmered eggs that have been done in a whole bunch and then put through a process. You don't want any dark circle around the yolk. And then of course, the most important thing for a simmered egg is you want a pleasing flavor, which all of these will have. And then the more organic, the more local, better fed chickens you get your eggs from, the better the egg will taste. And I can guarantee you, there is a difference in flavor between a standard store-bought egg and a free-range egg, just like there's a difference between these eggs and the eggs that you would find in a bucket in a restaurant. Nope, I managed to not be able to overcook that either. There was a time in my life that all I would do is overcook eggs by boiling them. So when I'm trying to do it now, I seem to can't, I seem to not be able to do it. So I'm gonna take one egg in a small pan and boil it like I used to do before I learned how to do it properly. And then I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. I'm gonna do method three again, which is like the one I started with when we tested out the age of the eggs, but I'm just gonna do a whole pot of them because I've got some other egg videos coming up later this week. So I'm going to simmer these next eggs using method three which is pretty much method two, except that like before, once they come to a boil, you take them off the heat and set them aside for 20 minutes, which honestly I think is my favorite way to do it if I'm just going for a straight hard boiled egg and I'm not interested in a softer or medium egg. So let's get started on that while I boil the hell out of this one experimental egg. <laughs> Egg so I can show you what it looks like when you overcook an egg. So I've got two pots going and of course with this method three you take eggs straight from the refrigerator which is why these have an F on them. F for fridge so that I know where they came from and I don't get mixed up in the process. These are going to come to a boil at which point I'll turn it down and take it off the heat. This guy's been sitting here for a really long time. This is how I used to boil eggs. And actually, shamefully, I used to boil eggs until they cracked and they started to ooze out of the shell. I think that's probably a common way to do it. Who has time to stand in a kitchen and watch eggs boil? Take them out on time. But trust me, it's worth it to simmer your eggs properly in one of the three methods I have shown you today. All right, take that off the heat and set it aside for 20 minutes. Check out that sad, sad, egg being deprived of water. Take this off the heat now, cool it down. We're going to revisit that one very shortly. So I'll have to wait for 20 minutes for this method three batch of eggs to be ready uh, to peel. And we'll take a look at what those look like and then we can wrap this up for the day. So I'll be right back. All right, let's see if I did this right. I boiled it for an indeterminate amount of time, very hard the whole way through, and then just threw it in a sink full of water. It used to be really easy for me to overcook eggs in their shell. Let's see if I did it right. And I didn't, it's such a fail. I mean, that's a first for me. Failing at failing? <laughs> failing at failing. I will look for a picture of an overcooked egg online and post it here, here, wherever. I hope everything I did today made sense. I hope you learned some things. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you think there's some helpful information in here, share. Come back for an episode on deviled egg, for an episode on pickled eggs. For now, thank you for watching my video and have a fantastic day.
Baxter, Baxter, are you helping mommy boil eggs today? Hmm? Are you helping boil eggs today? Baxter, you, you can't be on the, you can't be, you can't be up there, buddy. Come on, you can't be up here. It's not a place for kitties. <laughs>